Hey, what's happening YouTube? Welcome back to Sense of South Jersey with me, Kellen, for another fragrance review. Today we're going to be taking a look at a leather fragrance, at least that's what it's classified as. It came out in 1980 from the house of Oscar de la Renta, and it is Poor Louis. So as usual, what we'll do, we'll break down the fragrance into five parts, taking a look first at its box and bottle presentation. Then I'll talk about the fragrance's notes, and then I'll talk about my experience wearing the fragrance and how its performance held up. Then I'll give it my overall thoughts, and then of course my overall rating. First, before we get started, if you're new to the channel and you enjoy classic men's fragrance content, make sure to subscribe to help the channel. We've just hit 6,000 subscribers. I wanted to thank you all. Um, if you have an Instagram, check out the Sense of South Jersey Instagram page for news and updates on the channel, photos of fragrance for my collection and daily scent of the day posts. Let's take a look at Poor Louis. Okay, let's start things off with the presentation. Let's take a look at the box. So the box for Poor Louis, sorry about the reflection there, guys. Pretty simple, you got kind of this silver metal looking color with a navy blue outline that goes all the way around. It says Poor Louis here, Oscar de la Renta, the size and the, and the fragrance concentration. It's a 100 ml bottle and box. Actually, excuse me, no, 90 ml, so three ounces. Nothing on the top. And on the bottom, you've got your barcode and some brand information. So simplistic box opens up from the front, does have a French wrapper. We'll take a look at the bottle. The bottle's interesting. I actually like it. It's pretty classy looking. Um, you got that symbol there on the top. The cap does click into place. You can hold it. It says Pour Louis and Eau de Toilette and Oscar de la Renta, the signature on the bottom. And then here on the bottom of the bottle, you have the sticker which looks like it has just more brand information. I do not see a batch code, except there is one actually etched in there. It's gonna be hard to see on the camera. And on the back, you don't have much going on too. So take the cap off. The cap is rather large. It's plastic, but it's pretty solid plastic. And you can see a nice gold atomizer there. Let's take a look at the spray distribution. So pretty decent. It kind of just shoots it out in, in one, one blast there. Um, spray some on here. But pretty nice presentation. I like the bottle more than I like the box, but it's still, it's, it's simplistic and classy. Okay, now talking about the notes for Oscar de la Renta's Pour Louis. So this being a 1980s fragrance, as many of the fragrances that I review on this channel, there's gonna be a boatload of notes. So I'm going to read them off to you guys, and then I'm gonna talk about which ones I pick up on the most. So in the top, we have aldehydes, lavender, juniper berries, basil, caraway, galbanum, sage, anise, and bergamot. And in the heart of the fragrance, in the middle, you have carnation, patchouli, cinnamon, geranium, cedar, vetiver, and cyclamen. And then in the base, we have leather, oak moss, labdanum, sandalwood, and musk. So the fragrance is floral. Um, it's got a little bit of the, I would say, the cinnamon and mossiness in there. And of course, leather comes through as well, but it's like a floral leather kind of mossy scent um, overall. So I, I see why they classified this as a leather fragrance. However, there are definitely some nuances of some fougere uh, quality characteristics in this fragrance too. All right, so the performance for Pour Louis by Oscar de la Renta. I would say this is a six hour fragrance. You can probably reach eight if you are spraying heavy. I have applied a lot of it. I've worn it a lot recently. You can see that the, the fragrance line is probably about just under half the bottle. So you can get to the eight hour mark if you do spray a lot. I'm talking 10 plus sprays. It definitely sticks to clothing. But if you were just to apply maybe three to four sprays, I would imagine that you know, you're gonna get to the six hour mark. The only other product I have for this that would help push the performance is gonna be a hair and body wash. You can see there, Oscar de la Renta, Pour Louis. Um, it smells very nice. It's light. It's not as nearly as heavy as the fragrance. It doesn't have the super heavy characteristics of some other body washes that match the fragrance that I own um, with obviously different scents. But uh, it's, you know, again, body washes only do so much, which is not that much to begin with. But I would say if you are a average applier, it's going to be six hours. If you spray a ton of it, it'll probably last a little bit longer, which is what I do. So I get to that eight hour range. So between six and eight, I think is a, is a decent guesstimate on this performance of this fragrance. Okay, so my overall thoughts on Pour Louis by Oscar de la Renta. Um, so I had had this fragrance for a long time, sort of slept on it, wore it. I know I put it in my original barbershop list and I said I really liked it and I did. However, I just didn't reach for it for a long time, probably because I got a lot of other fragrances in right after it and it just kind of went, fell by the wayside. So I wanted to revisit it and the second I sprayed it on, I was like, wow, this is a really great fragrance. It's clean, it's floral, but it's got a darker, deeper, kind of muskier, you know, uh, side, side to it. It definitely has some characteristics of like a high-end barbershop, that clean men's, gentlemen's grooming vibe. It definitely gives off. It's got a little bit of the powdery notes mixed in with the green and the floral and then, you know, the warm spiciness to it. Um, it sort of reminds me of Chanel's Antaeus. 
except in taste is a little bit darker. I think this is easier to wear, right? So if you are maybe a novice or you don't have either one and you want to pick one, the one that's going to be a little bit more crowd pleasing, go with Oscar de la Renta Pour Louis. Um, Number two, the re second reason I would say is because it's a lot less money. Chanel and Taze is, is a good fragrance. Um, that one I still have really have yet to really wear a ton of, um, but I've worn a lot of this one and I know that it's a definitely easier wear. I think this is, could be an all year round fragrance, except maybe in the highest of heat, those days that are 96 to 100 degrees, maybe you would want to, you want to wear just something really, really citrus and fresh where um, this is not that. However, if it's just the regular temperature, you can probably rock this all year round. I like it. I think it's a safe wear if you're wearing it lightly to the office, or if you want to spray heavy, you could definitely wear this on a night out. It's it'll it'll last. It kind of has that evening wear feel if you, if you spray it heavy, or if you just want one or two sprays, you could get away with this at the work. Um, it's it's got the the fougere characteristics, also the leather. Uh, there's the pretty versatile scent, and it's really inexpensive, and it's very masculine. I think uh, it, it smells great, and this is definitely one that you can blind buy if you're into classics and not feel bad about it because I think it goes for around 20 bucks. They have a flanker called Oscar de la Renta Fresh, but from what I understand, that is very, very similar to many, many newer fragrances that come out. So this is the only one I have from the house of Oscar de la Renta. Uh, I know that there's some other ones I think called Gentleman, the one that looks like a domino, but I wasn't as interested in that. This is the one that I wanted to own. And now that I've been wearing it a lot, it's definitely one that I would want to keep as soon as I finish this bottle, you know, once I uh, get through it, I would definitely purchase another one. I, I really enjoy this one. It lasts long, smells great, it's masculine, it hits on a lot of points, it's inexpensive, and it's high quality too. So this is definitely a great fragrance if you don't own it. Definitely pick it up. All right, guys, it's time for my overall rating for Oscar de la Renta's Port Louis. So as far as the presentation goes, the box is kind of plain. I do like the bottle, however, um, so I'll dig in a few points for the box. We'll overall, we'll give it a 7 out of 10 for the presentation, but what can you expect? It's not an expensive fragrance, so, you know, it's not that big of a deal. As far as the performance goes, um, like I said, I'm getting anywhere between 6 and 8 hours, so I'll give it a 7 for performance. I do spray heavy, so I think that attributes to it, maybe sticking to my clothes and me noticing it more um, as the, the day goes on. On. And as far as the scent goes, I'm going to give this an 8.5 out of 10. I really, really like the scent. Again, easier wear, kind of like the beginners and Teus, but more versatile, less deep, and obviously less expensive. But again, the scent itself is really, really nice. Um, and, and once I wore it a lot, I really realized how much of a, a great fragrance this is. So for an overall rating for Oscar de la Renta's Pour Louis, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. All right, everyone, that's my review of Oscar de la Renta's Poor Louise. So I wanted to thank all of you so much for watching. If you made it this far, let me know in the comment section, what do you think about Oscar de la Renta's Poor Louis? Is it your favorite fragrance from the house? Um, do you like this one? Do you not like this one? You know, I always appreciate all of the interaction. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so and check out the Sense of South Jersey Instagram page for news and updates on the channel. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Take care.